Welcome to Notes for Engineers. I'm Alistair Cook, and I'm carrying on with a series on VMware snapshots. In video number two, I looked at what VMware snapshots are, and one of the comments I made is that snapshots are useful, and yet they're dangerous. And so I'm going to look at some of the usefulness, and look at the dangerous. I did say that snapshots are like a chainsaw. Extremely useful, but if you're not careful, they'll have your leg off. So, what are the dangers with a, a VMware snapshot? The first danger is filling up data stores. Virtual machines reside on data stores, and they need some free space on the data stores in order to operate. If we completely fill a data store, every virtual machine on that data store will come to a stop until there's free space. While the VMs are stopped, none of their applications are running, nothing's accessible off the network. This is kind of a big problem because all of our production virtual machines potentially are offline. The second danger is that virtual machines time travel when we go to in a snapshot. Most systems don't like this going backwards in time. It can be a bad thing. So let's have a look at these. How are we going to fill up the data stores with a snapshot? Well, there's two things. The first thing is that the moment we take the snapshot, a VMSN file is created. This file holds the entire RAM contents for the virtual machine. So if the virtual machine's got 4 gigs of RAM, the VMSN file is 4 gigs in size. On the other hand, if the virtual machine has 64 gigs of RAM, then it's a 64 gig VMSN file. Better have budgeted that in your free space. Incidentally, there is an option to not include memory state with a virtual machine snapshot, and that's appropriate if you're using the snapshot for backup, in which case the VMSN file doesn't actually get very large. The file that does always get created and does grow over time is this Delta file. The Delta file is where the virtual machine is writing data to. Every time the virtual machine writes to a block, that write goes into the Delta file, and so as the virtual machine writes to more and more blocks over time, the Delta file will grow. Potentially, the Delta file could grow to be as large as the configured size on the underlying disk. So if the virtual machine has a 60 gigabyte hard drive and we snapshot it, the Delta file could grow to be 60 gigabytes in size. Now, it's unlikely the VM's Delta file will grow to 60 gigabytes in size. You'd have to touch every block on the disk for that. But it is important to realize that it could grow, and it will continue to grow for as long as the VM is running while the snapshot's in place. And it's these Delta files that usually end up filling data stores, and sometimes it comes as a surprise that the Delta file has filled up the data store. Shouldn't. You should always be monitoring the free space on your data stores. You should always be monitoring the number and age of snapshots on your VMs. The second danger is virtual machine time travel. Time is only supposed to go forwards. When we hit the go to button on a virtual machine, then we are taking the virtual machine back to the moment in time when that snapshot was taken. That's the purpose of the go to button. In a production virtual machine, this could be rather problematic because the rest of the world, the rest of the universe has progressed forwards and will see your virtual machine go back in time. As an example, if it's a Windows domain controller, you'll see a, a USN rollback that the other domain controllers have not gone back in time, but they see this one virtual machine go backwards, and they see that its sequence number for the transactions has, has gotten out of sequence, it's gone back to an older version. The Vir virtual machine will actually have to be taken out of being a domain controller, be DC promo back out of the domain, and then in again before it will be a domain controller again. Now, that's a relatively small problem if it's a domain controller, because all the data inside the domain controller is replicated to the other domain controllers. But what about unique data in this virtual machine? All of the new data that arrived at this virtual machine since the snapshot we've just gone back to will be lost. So every piece of data that's been saved, new files on a file share maybe, or even just changes to existing files on the file share, these will all roll back. Any databases that this virtual machine is running will also be rolled back. So maybe if it was orders from customers, if we go to a snapshot taken last night, well, every order that uh, came into that, that virtual machine will be rolled back to last night's state, and we'll lose all of the orders since the snapshot. It's really important to understand when you go to a snapshot, everything in that virtual machine is reverted in time to the moment of the snapshot. So having told you that the snapshots uh, can cause data stores to, to fill up and every virtual machine to stop and can cause problems with data inside your virtual machines, why would you then use snapshots? Well, there are three primary reasons for using snapshots. The first one is virtual machine backups. Pretty much all virtual machine aware backups work by snapshotting virtual machines. Second thing is that you sometimes use them as a back out. If you're applying updates to virtual machines and you're afraid that one of them is going to cause a catastrophic failure, then you can do an immediate back out using the snapshots. And uh, we'll have a look at that. The other thing is that test and development environments are a great place to use snapshots. This is where you will most often use snapshots. So starting with backups. 
In normal operation, your virtual machine holds its VMDK file opens for reads and writes. While the VMDK file is open read-write by one virtual machine, nothing else can open that file even for just reads. So in order to be able to read that VMDK file, which is the, the virtual machine's hard drive, and make copies of it, we snapshot the virtual machine. At this point, the VMDK file transitions to be open to read only by the virtual machine, and the Delta file that's newly created is open for read-write. Once the VMDK file is read-only, we can copy that file out, and this is how the backups work, and then delete the snapshot. Okay, so the, the snapshot process for virtual machine aware snapshots is generically snapshot the virtual machine, copy the flat file out, delete the snapshot, move on to the next virtual machine. This kind of backup architecture is incredibly useful to us. It's a, it allows for a very fast backup. We also use a, a feature called change block tracking to allow us to use just a differential based uh, backup as well, which helps make this an even faster backup methodology. The other place that we use snapshots on production virtual machines is as an immediate backout, particularly when we're applying patches. A buddy of mine had a, a really bad experience of patching a Windows Server a while ago. So Microsoft released a toxic patch for SQL Server that if your SQL Server was also a domain controller would cause real problems. And so my buddy was updating a, a Windows Small Business Server and all small business servers are domain controllers and SQL servers. So he applied the update, uh, he rebooted his, his SBS server, client's SBS server, and on the reboot it blue screened. I said that's not good but we've dealt with this before. Hits the reset button. On the next startup, he says, let's go for last known good. Blue screen. Next startup, let's try safe mode. Blue screen. He could not get this machine to start back up and come into an operating state after the patch was applied. The only way to return this particular SBS server to service was to go and find the backup tapes. He was very pleased that he had confirmed the viability of the backups before he'd applied his patch. Of course, this was some time ago and it was with a physical small business server. What about if we had a virtual machine and we'd snapshotted the virtual machine immediately before applying this update? So snapshot virtual machine, apply patch, reboot the virtual machine, it comes back to that blue screen. Well, we'd probably still go with the uh, last known good and, and safe mode to just try and go forwards with this. But uh, when all of those failed, we'd be able to go to the snapshot that we took just before we applied the patch and have a running virtual machine without having to go back through all of those tapes and, and go through the restore process. Uh, would have been much, much nicer. Now, only for an immediate back out, this is really critical. One of the things I see some customers do is snapshotting the virtual machine before patching it and leaving the snapshot in place for a while. There is some expectation that maybe a couple of days later they will go to the snapshot. But you can't go to the snapshot on a production machine if new data might have arrived because going to is going to discard all of the changes since the snapshot. The go to option is only there for a really toxic update where the virtual machine never returns to service after the reboot. You should delete that snapshot if the VM comes back into service and new data could arrive. It's not valid to say we're going to back out two days or a week later using the snapshot. So the end of that patch window, the snapshot should be gone. It should only ever be one snapshot on a production machine. New data arriving in the VM must always be retained. That's valuable to us. A uh, snapshot itself is not a backup. And this is another perception thing. Some people will snapshot a virtual machine and say, well, that's my backup. Uh, should something go wrong with the virtual machine in the next week, I'm going to go to that snapshot. Of course, this is not particularly useful to us for either of the two backup use cases. The first one being somebody deletes a file. You can't extract a single file out of a VM snapshot. You just can't. You can only go to it. And then, of course, you've discarded all the changes since the snapshot. The second thing is that we use backups for disaster recovery if there's no longer a virtual machine where there once was a virtual machine. Right, backups are really useful for that. Uh, however, a snapshot's not going to help you because it's on the same storage that contains the virtual machine. If your SAN dies, the snapshot's not going to get you out of trouble. Uh, so snapshots themselves enable virtual machine backups, but they are not a backup of their own. At most, they will allow you to back out a toxic update. The most common place to use snapshots is in a test and dev environment. So in production, not so much, but in test and dev, snapshots are extremely useful to allow you to do things like testing build automation. This is where I've used huge numbers of snapshots, going through a build process that might have 15 or 20 application installs and being able to snapshot partway through and test the application install. If the application install doesn't work quite right, you can go back to the snapshot. Even better, testing patches, testing upgrades, 
testing things is a great use case for snapshots testing the order in which you need to do a series of upgrades and patches can be really useful to have snapshots along the way to revert and try different orders now the place I use snapshots a lot is in training environments, the ability to have that snapshot of perfect state for the start of a particular lab and to go back to that clean state any time you want to restart the lab. Hugely useful. I guess the summary is that it's anywhere that you need to be able to try from the same start point again and again and try different techniques afterwards, the snapshots are going to be extremely useful in a test and development environment. So snapshots are both extremely useful and extremely dangerous. There should only ever be one snapshot on a production virtual machine. It should be for the backup or to protect you against that toxic update. Snapshots should both go as soon as that activity is over. So as soon as the backup is complete, the snapshot should be gone. As soon as the virtual machine returns to service after the update, the snapshot should be gone as well. Of course, use in a test and dev environment can be very different. You can have lots of different snapshots. You can have chained collections of snapshots. You can have snapshots that hang around for a while so you can revert states. And dev and test, you should use snapshots as you need them. No matter where you're using snapshots, always watch out for free space on your data stores. Even in a test and dev environment, it can be very painful to run out of free space on a data store and have all of your VMs stop, particularly if there is a group of developers who need to be cutting code and now all of their virtual machines have stopped. Snapshots are extremely useful and you can use them with care, but do be very careful as you do use them as they can be dangerous. This has been Notes for Engineers. We'll be back with more videos at notesforengineers.com.